last video, we'll prove that the nth cyclotomic polynomial is irreducible in Z bracket X. This is a monic polynomial, so irreducible in Z bracket X also means irreducible in Q bracket X. This was something that followed directly from Gauss's lemma. So let's suppose that the nth cyclotomic polynomial is not irreducible in Z bracket X, which means that it's equal to F of X times G of X, where F of X and G of X are both in Z bracket X and they're monic, and F of X is irreducible. So maybe we can factor this in many different ways. What we're gonna do is pull out an irreducible factor of uh, the nth cyclotomic polynomial and call that F of X. Our goal is going to be to show that F of X equals the nth cyclotomic polynomial, that there's the only way to pull out an irreducible factor is to have F of X be the nth cyclotomic polynomial. Okay, so let's say that zeta is a primitive nth root of unity that is a root of f of x. So we have this irreducible polynomial. It has to have some roots. The roots on the left-hand side are all of the primitive nth roots of unity. So let's pick one that's a root of f of x as opposed to g of x. So, okay, what does that mean about f of x? This is a monic irreducible polynomial with coefficients in uh, q. It is the minimal polynomial of this zeta over Q. So this is a clever idea. This is one of the key things to remember in this proof is now we're gonna pick any prime P not dividing N. Zeta to the P is a primitive nth root of unity also. We know what happens when you take an element of order N in a finite cyclic uh, group, this group of nth roots of unity and raise it to the pth power, we know what the order of that is. Since p doesn't divide n, this also has uh, order n. So this is a primitive nth root of unity. So this is a root of the nth cyclotomic polynomial by n of x. So zeta to the p, it's either a root of f or it's a root of g. And the key step in this argument is to show that if zeta to the p is a root of g, we're in trouble. That if g of zeta p equals zero, then we get a contradiction. Okay, let's assume this for now and see the rest of the proof. What are the primitive nth roots of unity? They are all zeta to the a, where a is between one and n and has gcd one with n. So you can write everyone as zeta to some power where that power is an integer between one and n that has GCD one with n. What does that mean having GCD one with n? That means when you take this integer a and you factor it into a product of primes, no prime that occurs in that factorization divides n. So we're gonna factor just one of these a's as p1 times p2 times 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 pk, product of a whole bunch of primes, not necessarily distinct, and none of these primes, pi, divides n. Okay, so what is true now is uh, zeta is a primitive uh, nth root of unity that is a root of f of x. Zeta to the p1 is also a primitive nth root of unity, and it also has to be a root of f of x by this statement. So, Zeta to the P1 now, this is a primitive nth root of unity that is a root of F of X. We raise it to the P2 and we get something that's also a primitive nth root of unity that is also a root of F of X because it can't be a root of G. And then again, raise it to the P3, the P4 up to the PK. And at the end, because Zeta to the P1 to the P2 is Zeta to the P1 times P2, Going through this process, at the end, you get zeta to the a is a primitive nth root of unity, and it is a root of f of x. So we're going to do this for each a between 1 and n that has GCD 1 with n. You factor it, and then you raise it to these powers in order. And what you see is that for each one of these a's, zeta to the a is a root of f of x. But that means that every primitive nth root of unity is a root of f of x. So if you think about the roots on each side here, 
The left-hand side, the roots are all of the primitive nth roots of unity. And the right-hand side, also all of the primitive nth roots of unity are roots of f of x. So since every root of the encyclotomic polynomial is also a root of f, the encyclotomic polynomial divides f of x, but uh, because of this factorization, in fact, we see that they are the same, that because uh, every primitive nth root of unity is a root of f, that implies that f of x is the nth cyclotomic polynomial, which completes the proof. So what do we have left to do? We're going to go back to this big step and say, OK, we have one primitive nth root of unity that is a root of f of x. Let's take p to be any prime not dividing n. We know that zeta to the p is either a root of f or it's a root of g. We're going to suppose that it's a root of g, and we're going to derive a contradiction. So uh, I'll pause and erase, and we'll finish the proof. Let's finish the proof that the nth cyclotomic polynomial is irreducible by proving this claim star. So we're going to suppose that zeta to the p is a root of g of x. That is, g of zeta p equals 0. So what does that mean? Zeta is a root of this polynomial g of x to the p. So this is a polynomial in z bracket x where every time we see, we take g of x, and every time we see an x, we just put in x to the p instead. And now zeta is a root of that. But before, we saw that f of x was a monic irreducible polynomial that had zeta as a root. So it is the minimal polynomial for zeta over q. So g of x to the p is some polynomial that has zeta as a root. So the minimal polynomial has to divide it in z bracket x. So, OK, so what does that mean? If f of x divides g of x to the p, that means that g of x to the p is equal to f of x times something, where these are two monic polynomials with coefficients in z. This other polynomial, h of x, is a monic polynomial in z bracket x as well. OK, so this is where our contradiction is going to come from. There's another big idea, which is we're going to take this factorization and reduce all of the coefficients of these uh, these are all integers. The coefficients of these polynomials are integers. We're going to reduce the mod p to get a factorization in fp bracket x. So let's say g bar of x to the p is the polynomial we get from g of x to the p by reducing each coefficient modulo p. Same thing for f and h. So g bar of x to the p is f bar of x times h bar of x in fp bracket x. And now we're going to use some things that we talked about last lecture. Remember, fp bracket x is a ring of characteristic p. If you take a polynomial and you raise it to the p, say x to the n plus an minus 1, x to the n minus 1 plus 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 a1x plus a0, and raise it to the p, expand everything out, every term is going to have uh, a factor of p, so it's going to disappear, except the pth power of each term in this sum. So we get x to the n to the p plus a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1 to the p plus 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 a1 x to the p plus a0 to the p. That's x to the p to the n plus, well, a n minus 1 is an element of fp. You raise it to the p and you get back a n minus 1. Every element of fp satisfies. Uh, alpha to the p equals alpha. So you just get the same coefficient, a n minus 1, times x to the p to the n minus 1, plus, 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 a1, same a1 as before, times x to the p plus a0. So what are we seeing? g bar of x to the p is g bar of x raised to the p. So the left-hand side of this equation here is some polynomial in fp bracket x raised to the pth power. So this is equal to uh, f bar of x times h bar of x. 
So what are we seeing? We're seeing that uh, f bar of x and g bar of x have a common factor in fp bracket x. So this is uh, where this contradiction is going to come from. So now we're going to back up and leave fp bracket x and go back to our factorization in z bracket x that started this whole thing. What are f of x and g of x? They're two integer polynomials where their product is equal to the nth cyclotomic polynomial. So we have phi n of x equals f of x times g of x. We can take this factorization involving integer polynomials and reduce mod p. What we see is that phi n of x bar is f bar of x times g bar of x in fp bracket x. And because we just showed that f bar of x and g bar of x have a common factor in fp bracket x, this common factor shows up with multiplicity at least two in uh, phi n bar of x. So phi n bar of x has a multiple root in a splitting field for this polynomial over fp. Okay, this is going to be a problem. This polynomial phi n of x uh, bar, this polynomial in fp bracket x, divides x to the n minus 1 in fp bracket x. So why is that true? Why does you take your nth cyclotomic polynomial, you know that divides x to the n minus 1 in z bracket x, but how do you know that you reduce mod p and you divide x to the n minus 1 in fp bracket x? Well, you just factor in z bracket x, and then you reduce all the coefficients mod p. And it's clear that the phi n of x bar divides x to the n minus 1 in fp bracket x. As you start with a factorization in z, you reduce all the coefficients mod p, you get a factorization of x to the n minus 1 in fp bracket x. And now we're in trouble, because this polynomial has a multiple root in some splitting field for it over fp. And it divides x to the n minus 1. But in the last lecture, we showed that when uh, the characteristic p does not divide n, that the polynomial x to the n minus 1 in fp bracket x is separable, that it's relatively prime to its derivative. We saw this by actually computing the derivative. It's n times x to the n minus 1. So if p doesn't divide n, that's not 0. And the only root of that polynomial is 0 of the derivative. And 0 is not a root of this polynomial. So since this polynomial with a repeated root divides x to the n minus 1, but x to the n minus 1 is separable in fp bracket x, we get a contradiction. Because x to the n minus 1 cannot have a multiple root in a splitting field, which means no factor of it can have a multiple root in a splitting field. So this is our contradiction. So I think this argument is pretty complicated because you have to remember several things inside of proving this special case, which is first, this idea of saying, OK, we know g of zeta to the p equals 0 of viewing zeta as a root of this polynomial g of x to the p, this integer polynomial. So this is a first important thing to remember. Uh, we get this factorization in z bracket x. And then another big idea is you want to reduce modulo p, use what we know about p powers of polynomials in fp bracket x to rewrite the left-hand side, and then conclude that f bar and g bar have a common factor in fp bracket x. Then we want to use what we know about x to the n minus 1 being separable in fp bracket x to derive a contradiction. <laughs>